Sometimes, when in a self-reflective mood, staring out a window and sipping chamomile tea, I remind myself that my Neopets have been dying from neglect for the past 23 years. Hi, I'm Irene, and I'll get back to that train of thought later. But first, a bit of information on what's going on here. This is what I call my Magello Journal. It's where I've been exploring Magello's Mission Gold Pure Pigment Set of 34 Single Pigment Watercolors. It's a mouthful, for sure. Every time I say it, my tongue twists around like the rubber band on one of those balsa wood airplane toys. You remember those, right? I think they're still around. They used to be super inexpensive, probably due to the cheap materials. They were for the kids who craved the realism of an airplane over the flying saucer shape of the frisbee. Whether powered by rubber band or wrist flicking, it ultimately didn't matter. They all ended up stuck in a tree. The color for this session is bamboo green, or at least that's what Magello is calling this pigment. To most others, PG-36 is known as phthalo green yellow shade. But who wants to be like everyone else? You do you, Magello, and keep on bamboo greening. That sounds like some questionable enabling, doesn't it? Maybe I should rethink that take. Whatever. It can be fixed in the edit. The sketchbook is from B Paper Company's B Creative line of art journals. This 100% cotton watercolor paper version was unavailable for many, many, many months. Such a long time, actually, that I finally gave up, wrote it off, and moved on. Of course, that's when it came back. So, at the time of this voiceover recording, it's currently in stock at Amazon. Although my choice for important watercolor projects is Hanamula's collection, this bee journal is a really nice and convenient option for watercolor sketchbooking. Returning to frisbees, what a low-concept toy that was. A plastic disc with no moving parts, yet it facilitated hours of outdoor activity. Until it landed on a roof, that is. The Frisbee was made by wham in the late 1950s, the same company that had produced the Hula Hoop. And I can't think of the Hula Hoop without thinking about my favorite Coen Brothers movie, The Hudsucker Proxy. Especially the part where guys in the advertising department brainstorm possible product names like the Dancing Dingus, the Belly Go Round, the Wacky Circumference, and the Daddy-O. It feels like years ago, but I'm pretty sure I mentioned Neopets earlier. They're an online pet simulation game. Back in 1999, it was all the rage. But if I recall correctly, no matter how long you left your creatures to fend for themselves, they never died. They simply languished in hunger and thirst, apparently for all eternity. Because I just Google searched, and it looks like Neopets is still up and running. No, I didn't log in to check on my menagerie. I'll admit there's a touch of morbid curiosity there, but that account info is long forgotten, which is for the best, really. Of all the useless digital games out there, Neopets was probably the least worthy of my time. Wow, that came out harsh. Man, I hope I'm not this grouchy for the rest of the day. Say what you will about PG-36. It's a decent mixer. That's right, I have said things in the past, such as, meh, it's not for me, or back off, bane of my existence. Wait, that last one is for PG-7, phthalo green blue shade. I've mentioned before that straight-up PG-7 hurts my eyes. 
but it sure is a mixing dynamo. PG-36 just isn't as intense. Considering my ambivalence toward PG-7, that's both a pro and a con. My preferred mixes on this spread were created using Permanent Yellow Deep PY-65, Quinacridone Red PR-207, Quinacridone Permanent Magenta PR-122, Dioxazin Violet PV-23, Ultramarine Light PB-29, Green Gold PY-150, and Red Brown PBR-25. This isn't surprising, since those are some of my favorite mixers. Yeah, within the complete set of 34 single pigment colors, Permanent Yellow Deep, Quinacridone Red, Dioxazin Violet, Green Gold, and Red Brown are go-tos for me. Ugh, bamboo. Sure, it can be green, but it can also be yellow, beige, olive, or sienna. You see, bamboo, whether soup ingredient or window treatment, cannot be pinned down, and nothing shows off its versatility as well as the bamboo brawl scene from the greatest martial arts movie of all time, The Legend of Drunken Master. It has several amazing fight sequences, including a fan-favorite final fight inside a steel factory. But back to bamboo. Would you believe they even make paper out of the stuff? I have a Hanamula mixed media sketchbook. It's 90% bamboo and 10% cotton rag. It was featured in a previous session, but will also appear in an upcoming video. It's a simple swatch session for several tubes of Daniel Smith iridescent watercolors, but I'm just happy to show the paper again, since it's a lesser-known product. A relative of mine installed bamboo flooring in his home nearly ten years ago. I can't help but admire it on every visit. Technically, bamboo is not a hardwood, because it's a grass from the subfamily Bamboo Soidae. But as it's harvested when fully mature, it's as hard as some traditional hardwoods. Bamboo is not to be confused with rattan, which is a vine-like climbing palm. Rattan's flexibility makes it a good choice for woven applications. Popular examples include baskets and furniture, such as the peacock chair. Although the peacock chair was a common item in late Victorian homes, it fell out of style until a resurgence in the 1970s when it became iconic of the laid-back hippie lifestyle. Speaking of hippies, I was recently listening to The Fifth Dimension and reminiscing about the 60s and 70s. Never mind that I wasn't even alive for most of the 60s, because there was this musical called Hair that was made into a movie also called Hair. It was set in 1960s New York and revolved around anti-war hippie counterculture. I've never seen it performed on stage. I've only seen the movie version from 1979, the one with Treat Williams and John Savage. Of course, individually, those two actors have done many movies over the years, but I only really associated them with hair and one other film from each. In the case of John Savage, it's The Deer Hunter, another Vietnam War story that won the Oscar for Best Picture in 1979. And in the case of Treat Williams, it's Deep Rising, a sea creature feature, which won zero Oscars in 1998. What did win Best Picture that year? That was Shakespeare in Love. I recall enduring that movie in a cinema, much to my regret. 
That's right. I preferred the one-liner-filled monster schlock of Deep Rising, because it wasn't an indulgent, overbloated wreck of a sappy romance. Nope, it was a cruise ship wrecked by an indulgent, overbloated kraken. Okay, I'm going to admit that one of the reasons I dislike Shakespeare in Love is its title, because it sounds like it was borrowed from the novel Dvorak in Love, which was published a decade earlier. To this Dvorak fan, that's feather ruffling stuff. Wait. Wow, things have gotten off track. As I was saying, The Fifth Dimension's Age of Aquarius and Let the Sunshine In, two very groovy songs, was the inspiration for this psychedelic painting. Although, looking at it now, it seems more like something from The Banana Splits and Friends. Eh, close enough. By the way, I have heard via Anne from the YouTube channel Art on the Creek that Magello has come out with Mission Titanium Gouache. I know, right? So I took a look at Amazon and found a listing for the 34 tube set for a mere $134. I know it sounds like a lot, but the breakdown calculates to less than $4 per 15 milliliter tube. And even though I've sort of committed to Holbein squash, I am very curious about Magello's titanium set. You know, it's possible these have been around for a while and I was simply oblivious. In any case, I'm hoping that more information and reviews will pop up in the near future. I'm thrilled to share this mixing and arting experience. Thrilled, I say. It's not every day that I can vent my grievances. Well, where someone might hear me, I mean. Usually it's futilely muffled into a Danish the pastry, not the national. Then again, if they're wearing a soft, cushy shirt... Oh. Until next time, explore the color-mixing possibilities and stay groovy, my friends. <laughs>